Hey everyone, Nathan here with Snipcart. Today we're going to look at Ruby on Rails and how valuable it is to developers in 2019. One of the questions I always see on dev forums is, should I learn Ruby on Rails? Or, as Google auto predicts it, is Ruby on Rails dead? Now we're not going to spend any time on that second question, is Ruby on Rails dead? Because it's not, it's not even a little bit dead, it's thriving, it's got an awesome community, uh, the, the gem libraries are constantly growing, and they're consistently making improvements. So at the end we'll even throw in um, a link to their 6.0, which is coming out in just a, a few days here. But that first question is a little more tricky. Should you learn Ruby on Rails? Now, that's tougher to answer because it really depends on your interests and your goals as a developer. So today we're going to look at four things. We'll look at what is Ruby on Rails, the three cornerstone features of Ruby on Rails. We'll look at its overall value, and then we'll see some really good examples of companies that have used Ruby on Rails to be very successful and build great sites. So what is Ruby on Rails, or as it's commonly referred to as just Rails? Rails is a server-side web application framework that's written in Ruby. Now, if you're new to Rails, let's make this very clear right now. Ruby and Rails are not the same thing. Ruby is the language, and Ruby on Rails is the framework. They're very, very different. And there's three components to Ruby on Rails that make this very, very advantageous to a developer. So let's take a look at the first of those three. The first feature of Ruby on Rails is Model View Controller. This is an architecture that helps developers reuse code and also work on parallel development. So essentially, the software gets divided into three parts. You have the model, the view, and the controller. But these three components are decoupled, which allow developers to work on separate parts at the same time. It means that building an application is super efficient for teams, and it also means that you can reuse code in other applications. So let's take a quick look at how that would work through a diagram. Everything here starts with the user, who will make a request from the controller. Now, the controller just has that one task to do, so for that, it will go to the model, where the change will actually occur. Then the model will send that information back to the controller, the controller will take that over to the view, and then the display will be seen by the user. Now, there's two big advantages to developers using this type of architecture. The first is reusable code. So because the controller just has one specific action to perform, that independent component can be used and pulled into another context. It can be integrated into something else. Also, because these three components are decoupled, because they're separated, you can also have different parts of a team working on different sections at the same time. Both of these, the reusable code and parallel development, are huge time savers. And now we have the second component, conventions over configurations, which is like the mantra of Rails users. You've probably heard it before. And in layman terms, conventions over configuration means that a framework like Rails comes with situations that have already been coded, so developers can either choose to adapt or ignore them. Basically, it means that there are pre-built features that come stocked and out of the box so that developers don't need to configure everything from scratch. So, for instance, just a, a quick analogy, uh, the airplane that you see, my dad built this in our garage, and I know it's absolutely crazy, um, but he didn't just go to the hardware store and buy each individual part for the plane. It's an RV-8, so different parts of the plane came in kits. So he has all of these pieces, and some of it he's building from scratch, but some of it he's not. For example, the, the engine here. He didn't put all of these pieces and assemble the engine from scratch. That part came pre-built, and then he installed it into the plane. However, certain parts he did do from scratch, like the wiring, the electrical. He had to work on the ailerons. At least he tells me. I don't know what that is. But there were certain parts that came pre-built, and then certain parts he had to do from scratch. Ruby on Rails is the same type of thing, and this is how we use conventions over configurations. You have some pre-built options, but you can also tinker on the hood if you want to. So as you can imagine, the, the main benefit of conventions over configurations is flexibility. You have the option. You can use a convention if you just want something pre-built out of the box. It's a huge time saver. Or you can configure your own. You can pop open the hood. You can take a look. You can tinker. You can fix. You can build from scratch. You have the option 
to do either one, which makes it very valuable for developers. Lastly, we have don't repeat yourself or dry. This is just keeping code as simple and unrepetitive as possible. The basic principle here is don't unnecessarily repeat code. So I'm actually gonna use an example from Corey Schaefer's video on YouTube, his, his uh, explanation of dry, it's very good. We'll add the link either in the comments or directly on the video. And you can go check that out in a little bit more detail, but here's the basic premise. Let's say that you have a homepage, services, pricing and contact, and you've got a, a header on all of those pages, but you want to change that header on each of those pages. Well, rather than going and changing the header on the homepage, and then changing the header on the services, and then changing the header on the pricing, and then changing the header on the contact, very, very repetitive, the idea is to centralize that piece of code to change it on all of those pages, so you just have to change it once. So let's see what that would look like. Here you have one section of header code that will be used to change in your homepage, services, pricing, contact. It's all localized in one place. Now this is great for devs because it means that they can make changes much more easily. And also upkeep or maintenance is much more manageable. So again, if you're not familiar with Dry, I, I recommend Corey Schaefer's video. It's very quick, very informative, and goes into a little bit more explanation than we do here. So again, these three components, MVC, conventions over configuration, and dry, aren't unique to Rails, but the three together work very powerfully in Rails when combined. So I can already hear people saying, you know, yeah, but this framework has those two, or that framework can do X, Y, Z without dry. And they're right. Like I said, these components aren't unique to Rails, but our goal here isn't to analyze every single framework and do comparisons of all of them. Our goal here is to just see the value of Rails, which is what we're about to do. So here are the six advantages of Rails that make it very valuable to devs in 2019. First is that low learning curve. It's built on a very forgiving, more simplistic language, Ruby. And as we discussed above, it's geared toward complete ease of use. It's a huge time saver for devs. Second is technical flexibility. Again, with conventions over configurations, you don't have to look at the hood. You have all of these pre-built items that you can pull from. However, you can build from scratch if you'd like to. So you have the options to do either. Then you have community support. And the Rails community is just known for being super open and supportive, very generous. Uh, seriously, if you go into any Rails forum, you'll see some great interaction. In any forum, you're going to have some bad apples, some people that just try and ruin things. But the overall community is very, very positive. Next, we have gems. And, and due to the thriving community, there are tons and tons of gems to pull from. Uh, they're pre-configured apps that you can plug into your site, just like you use a plugin on WordPress. Uh, but you have so many, so many options to pull from. Again, we'll put a link at the end where you can get those. And if you have a problem running or installing these, you have that community support there to help you out. Also, Rails is still a super marketable skill to have. If you check any job forum, you'll see there are still a lot of companies searching for Rails developers. So you have that low learning curve combined with the high demand, which makes Rails very, very, very appealing to up-and-coming developers. And despite popular belief, it is scalable. I know Twitter moved platforms uh, back in 2009, but a lot has changed in the last decade. Doesn't mean Rails isn't scalable anymore. So we're about to check out some examples of companies that did scale just fine with Rails. It's still their central framework. They had to get creative in a few different ways on their front end um, with some back end support. But let's take a look at those examples now. So here we have some options. We're not going to dive into too much detail. You're probably familiar with them already. We have Basecamp. Um, obviously, the, the founder of Basecamp is the writer and creator of Ruby on Rails. Uh, we have Funny or Die, Airbnb you've probably used before, Hulu, Kickstarter, GitHub, all of these huge, hugely successful websites with a massive following, a ton of users have all scaled and found ways to scale just fine with Ruby on Rails. So here we have a few links that might be helpful if you're interested in learning more about Ruby on Rails. We have their official site, talks about updates and features. Uh, I believe their version 6.0 is coming out in just a couple days here, so that's very exciting. They have their gem library as well. You can go see that active community I was talking about. Um, we have a tutorial, the Ruby on Rails tutorial. 
which is which is very awesome. You can poke around and, and kind of just see what Rails is all about. And then we also have a recent Rails article that we published uh, in Snipcart in our blog that talks a little bit more in detail about everything that we discussed today. So if there was something that wasn't clear, I would encourage you to go look at that before asking a question to make sure that we didn't cover it in that text. If afterwards you still have the question, please, please, please feel free to write to us. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you like it, please pass it along to your friends via you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those usual suspects. Uh, and if you love something about Rails that we didn't mention, leave us a comment. Go ahead and let us know what you love about Rails or what you don't. We love having this kind of conversation, and we would encourage you to leave us comments or questions below. Thank you so much, and we look forward to hearing from you.